Hi, this is Al, and I wanted to do an update on the uh, aquaponics system. Uh, we added a few days ago uh, some iron into the water, as well as spray some on the leaves so you can kind of see the color on them. But um, the iron is definitely uh, working pretty good because they're getting good green color now. And uh, there's uh, some changes that I that I uh, have to make to the system. Uh, so I want to show you those changes that need to be made due to the initial design and that way if you got to do your own system you kind of learn from my mistakes. Uh, we're adding also another grow tray over here from uh, another tote and uh, I'll show you how we do that step by step. But first things first, when uh, you're adjusting the cycle of the beds so that each bed will cycle say every 7 to 12 minutes uh, there may be times, uh, depending on how you adjust them and when, and also how do you adjust the uh, that valve, which is the return valve from the sump uh, down here. Uh, you may get it to a point where all the beds uh, occasionally will drain at the same time and rise at the same time. So when they're all filling at the same time, because the return uh, or the feed line and the return line are so close together there's uh, very little variation and you run out of water sometimes and that was a bad design on my part. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that feed line uh, pretty much almost with level on the trays. So it may end up being here or, or here and what that will do is it will give me all that um, column, uh, all the water column pressure that I need to push the water even faster uh, to the trace and then I can adjust the valve to get the timing that I need. But what it allows me to do is, is not have to worry whether these are all draining and filling at the same time because the variation of all of these trays put together is not enough to offset the difference in height between the supply line or the return line here and the supply line that's going to go down here. And that's uh, really why I'm doing that. Uh, right now I'm using the uh, recirculating pump that I have inside, which is a Harbor Freight pump that costs about 20 some dollars that pumps 260 gallons an hour and that gets hooked up to that uh, inline uh, water heater. It's a block heater for cars. And uh, I simply just connected a, a clear water hose to it and I'm using that to drain it uh, sufficiently to into this other uh, tray here because I don't want to lose that water. and. Uh, uh, in order to be able to drain the water to a level where I can drill my hole and put my uni seal in there and then lower that uh, that line. So let's talk about uni seals for a second. Uh, don't bother with anything else, use only uni seals. You can order them online, they're fairly inexpensive and uh, uh, they truly seal uh, really really well. I'm going to show you a close-up of what one looks like. So right here is what a uni seal looks like. And this uni seal is for one and a quarter inches. You can probably see that right there. And uh, that uni seal requires a two inch hole uh, to be put into it. So that's what I have on my drill is a two inch hole saw. And I will allow that uni seal, which I already have that in here, as you can tell. Let's see if we can get closer here. That's the uni seal that I have in place right now for one and a quarter inch, and then that's the one for one inch. The one and a quarter inch uni seal requires a two inch hole. The one inch, or I'm sorry, that's three quarter inch line. A three quarter inch line requires a one inch uh, uni seal hole into it. Uh, so that's the sizes that you're looking at uh, taking place in here. Another, so another uni seal that you see down here, uh, that one here is the uni seal that goes to the uh, one inch uh, bell siphon uh, pipe that I have put in there and I will show you a video of what that looks like uh, when you put it together or as you put it together so uh, anyways I thought I'd do a video and let you uh, see kind of the things that I'm running into and how you can overcome them uh, everything else is actually working really great the sump is working really good I'm using a sump uh, that's a 1200 gallon an hour sump uh, or a pump, excuse me, that uh, was fairly inexpensive, about $70 from uh, Harbor Freight, and it has a float switch. What I did though, uh, if you use this kind of design here where you have a barrel, 55 gallon drum, and then three blocks, 
when you put your 2x4 on top, you're going to find that to get in and out, uh, if you have to get the pump out for servicing, it's very tough. So I ended up having to cut a hole further down uh, for me to have easy access to get that pump in and out. And my water level doesn't uh, rise enough because that pump um, it has way more um, discharge uh, potential than uh, th than the uh, the amount of water that's draining from all of the trays, even if they were all uh, to do it simultaneously. So the that's kind of what I've learned. If if it ever overflows, though, there is a uh, you know an overflow up there that uh, it would go out of so that's kind of uh, where we are right now I will post another video uh, showing you what uh, making uh, one of these trays uh, looks like and that tray probably has a volume of maybe uh, three or four of these other trays combined here or of course you know it, it takes quite a bit of room so anyways uh, Thanks for watching. God bless everybody. Take care.